Hey everyone, April here. Today we're talking about Power Platform security, specifically data loss prevention. When we talk about security, securing our data is always top of mind. Probably all of our worst fears is building some kind of solution in the Power Platform and accidentally leaking confidential organizational information. Well, thankfully the Power Platform does offer these data loss prevention policies to help us keep the applications we build secure and prevent situations like that where you accidentally leak data. I did a video before on data loss prevention policies, a 10 minute overview, so definitely check that out if you're not familiar with them at all. What I wanna focus on today though, is some new functionality with data loss prevention policies to allow us to get more granular with the restrictions that we do. Specifically, how we can take a particular connector and restrict certain actions in it. And even how we can take connectors that have an endpoint and restrict what endpoints that connector can call. This is a brand new functionality in Preview right now, so I'm gonna give you an overview of what it means and how to set it up right after this. Let's start with where do we go to set up and see these data loss prevention policies? Well, that's done in the Power Platform Admin Center, which you can get to by going to admin.powerplatform.com. That'll take you here, and there are many things we can do in the Admin Center, like seeing all the Power Platform environments we have, viewing some analytics and all of that. But one of the things that you'll notice here on the left-hand tab is we have a data policies option. This is where we can go and set up those data loss prevention policies. Here's a policy that I already had set up that I showed in my previous video on data loss prevention policies. If I edit this policy and click next, you see I was using the capability of being able to classify different connectors as business or non-business. And one of the things that was added not too long ago as well is the ability to classify connectors blocked. So what we've been able to do is either completely block an entire connector, or we can mix and match the connectors between these business and non-business buckets. What that means is if I have, say, the Bing Maps connector in the non-business bucket, and in the business bucket, I have SharePoint, Salesforce, DocuSign, and Microsoft Forms. That means I cannot go create a workflow or a power app that both connects to SharePoint and Bing Maps and all these other connectors because they're in different buckets. You can only create apps and workflows for connectors that fall in the same bucket classification here. And of course, we wouldn't be able to create any apps or workflows if a connector was in the blocked bucket. But this brings up an interesting problem. What if we don't want to completely block a connector? So if we looked at my block tab here, I have Gmail. But what if I didn't really want to completely block Gmail? All I was trying to do was make it to where people couldn't send messages through Gmail, but I would like to receive messages from that and maybe aggregate them, put them in a SharePoint list or whatever it might be. We didn't have that level of access until now to be able to say, okay, I have this connector. I want to restrict this particular action from the connector, but say allow all these other actions. But we do now, and that's what this granular control gives us. So to really showcase this, let's walk through just setting up a new data loss prevention policy. So I'm going to go back to the data policies tab, and we're going to select the new policy option. And for this one, I'm going to call this policy uh, no tweets because we're going to work with the Twitter connector and we're going to make it to where we can pull data from Twitter and read tweets, but we can't tweet from our applications or workflows. So I'm going to get that a name. I'm going to click next. And for this policy, I really don't care about the business, non-business buckets, right? I want them to be able to use whatever connector and the mixture they want. But what I want to do is do a search here in the upper right hand corner for the Twitter connector. And I want to do that granular policy restriction based off of the different actions in this connector. So to do that, you're going to find the connector that you want to apply this policy to and click the three dots next to that. You'll see a new option at the bottom for configure connector. And one of the options you'll see is connector actions. So if we click that, it's gonna pop open a panel on the right-hand side, and it's going to show all of the different actions that we currently have for the Twitter connector right now. So as we see, we can do all kinds of things like posting a tweet, retweeting things, getting someone's followers, getting user timeline, and searching tweets. So for my policy, I don't really care if they get information from Twitter, but I just don't want people accidentally tweeting out confidential client information. So what I'm gonna do is on the allowed section here, I'm just gonna to toggle this post a tweet option 
and the retweet option to no. So now that means anyone using the Twitter connector inside of an application or a flow or whatever, they'll be able to do all these things like get followers, search tweets, but they can't physically send a tweet. The other important thing to know about this new functionality is here at the very bottom, we'll see an option for default connection action settings. And the default is allow new connector actions, but we have another option for block. So what this means is connectors are being updated all the time. So if in the future, a new action is added here in this case to the Twitter connector, if this setting is set to allow, that will automatically enable those different actions that are added. So if you wanna be extra safe, for example, you might turn this to block so that as new actions are added, they're blocked by default and not allowed. And then you could always go back into your policy in this connector's action settings here like we're seeing and explicitly enable those. That way they're just not automatically turned on by default when they're added. So that's all you really have to do. Click save here and that will apply the settings to that particular connector. Another thing I wanted to point out is we have this capability where we're seeing here where we can block particular actions and allow particular actions per connector. But if we look at the details that we have for the connectors here in our DLP screen, we can see we can filter by if a connector is blockable or not because there are certain connectors that aren't blockable like the SharePoint connector. Another thing you'll notice next to this though is this endpoints configurable. Certain connectors allow you to make calls to their API endpoints. So if we filter this list right here by yes, and we filter this list to see which connectors have a configurable endpoint, you see there's a handful. Things like SQL, Azure Blob Storage, SMTP, and HTTP with Azure AD, and webhooks in the regular HTTP connector. This is another new thing we can do with this granular level configuration for our DLP policies. We can actually restrict for say this HTTP connector here, what specific endpoints a user can call. Now that's really powerful because this HTTP connector is oftentimes blocked in many organizations because you might not want everyone and their dog to be able to call whatever web service or endpoint that they want to. So what we're able to do with these specific connectors that are endpoint configurable is click on those three dots next to it like what we did before with the Twitter connector and go to that configure connector option and we'll see a different option here for configure endpoints. You'll notice by default that there's an allow and the endpoint is an asterisk, meaning that this right now is allowing us to connect to any endpoint that we want to with this HTTP connector. So what we can do is we can click add endpoint so what this allows you to do is you can either explicitly allow certain endpoints or you can allow pretty much anything except for particular endpoints. And how it will work is the order in which you have it takes precedence. So that's what this information icon here is kind of telling us. These rules apply to all endpoints unless it's overwritten by rules higher up in the list. So say I only wanted my users to be able to make an HTTP call to one endpoint. I could change this star option here to deny. And then in this one that I just added, I can change the action to allow and put in the endpoint that I want to allow. So maybe I only want users to be able to connect to the Chuck Norris API to get Chuck Norris jokes. Alternatively, I could do it the other way. I could say allow everything and deny this one endpoint here. So let's click allow on the Chuck Norris API and we'll deny everything else so people can only post to the Chuck Norris API and we'll click save. Now let's just follow this through and make sure that this works. So we're gonna click next on this screen and this is where we have to choose where to apply this particular DLP policy to. So I'll just leave the all environments option shows. I'll click next. I'll confirm my settings here and then we'll create the policy. And at this point, once it's done creating, it is applied and ready to use. So how about we test that new endpoint filtering first and let's create a simple flow. So I'm gonna to go to new flow and we'll do just an instant cloud flow, which I'll manually trigger to test this out. So I'm gonna see, is it gonna let me put in, if I go to a new step and I search for that HTTP connector and choose this one right here, is it gonna let me put in an endpoint that's not the Chuck Norris endpoint? So I have a different joke API here called the official joke API. So I'm gonna to try to call this endpoint. So I'm gonna copy that. This is gonna be a get. I'm gonna paste that into the URI. So notice what happens. So I'm gonna just rename this. I'm gonna call it HTTP test. And I'm gonna to try to save it. And we'll see when I save it, 
we're going to get this yellow message up here that says that my flow was saved, but it can't be enabled because it conflicts with a data loss prevention policy. That's because that endpoint filtering is working. This isn't the Chuck Norris endpoint. That's the only one that I allowed. So if we remind ourselves of the settings that we had here in the pre-built connector, and if we go to the HTTP action, and we look at those endpoints, we're only allowing this and we're denying everything else. So now if I go to this Chuck Norris endpoint and I copy that and I put that in here instead and click save, now you see it worked. Change to green, it's ready to go. So that endpoint filtering part is definitely working. Now let's test out that Twitter where we block the action to post a tweet. So we'll do the same thing. We'll do a new instant flow here with the manual trigger option. And I'm gonna add a new step. We'll search for that Twitter connector and we see all the actions here. So remember, we allowed the option to get user and get all that. But what we blocked here is the post. So if I click on that, it's still going to let me add it. And it's going to act like it's going to let me tweet something. So I'll fill in the text here. But you'll notice if we look at the flow checker, we have an error. So what that is saying is it's showing a big error here, letting us know that the post a tweet action violates our DLP policy. So we can't actually do anything with this. So this shows what it looks like in the app experience if someone tries to use an action for that connector that conflicts with what we just set up in the DLP policy. So hopefully this gave you a good intro to the new granular control we have in our data loss prevention policies for endpoint filtering and for restricting certain actions. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button, and I'll catch you in the next video.